Mitch Altman. Probably every other hackerspace in the world says that too. What, what happened was he came through and was doing a, a speech for a bar camp organized by this guy, Caramoon, who was actually one of our co-founders also. He had started doing these hackers on a plane trips. He was thinking about doing a hackers on the plane comes to Tokyo because of Akihabara. And he just happened to be kind of touring during this bar camp and he did a speech about hackerspaces, starting hackerspaces and why he does them. So that day, at that speech, two of our other co-founders, uh, Lauren and Chris Shannon, they immediately registered the domain name and started setting up website stuff. Two weeks later, they had their first meeting in a bar and they kind of just went from there. Why to actually start one in, in Tokyo? There, there wasn't one. Uh, anything similar to it was closed membership. Unfortunately, one of the social norms, it seems anyway, in Japan is your hobby or your craft, if it's not a sport, it's not a social thing um, very often. And so a lot of people do their, their hobby or their craft or whatever it is they like to do in their room by themselves. And no one else ever knows that they do it. Yeah, I, th I think it's fear of social situations, but there's more to it than that. Our ratio of foreigners is very, very high compared to Japanese members. But the Japanese members that we do have are very much people who stand out from their own culture. So that's quite helpful. When you're making things, language is not as big of a barrier as people believe it to be. We want to increase that kind of Japanese ratio, but it's difficult to find the people that have the right kind of mindset for what we're trying to do. Word of mouth, talking to everybody you know, um, a lot of face-to-face -face promotion. We do a lot of our own events and we you know, promote them on like Facebook and our our message group and on um, several like Doorkeeper and all these other meetup and things like that. But we're trying to get more into local community events. So not long after we moved here, we did an event called Sutsutsu in a shrine over here in this neighborhood. It's all handcrafted goods. We did the same thing we do at Maker Fair, like all these nice, beautiful, handcrafted, well-made things and then like Here's all the guts of all of those things. Yeah. <laughs> we had a lot of people very interested in what we were doing, surprised to find that there's anything like that. You know, the next step is making it clear that it's here in their community and they can come and use it anytime. Hackerspaces are not organized as a union or a group of things. They're, each hackerspace is totally independent and has its own mind and not part of an umbrella company like Fab Lab is. In a way, they're all related, and in a way, they all co-fund each other, whereas we bootstrap everything from the ground up. Everything you see here was built by our members and by a lot of hard work by four or five of us for the last seven years. It's very different. You can't just say, oh, I want to put in an order for a $5,000 laser cutter, and it shows up. No, you got to save money or make your own you know, or hack a cheap one into a better one. Most hacker spaces make it a point to not focus at all on the profitability of the space or the profitability of any project. You do things for the fun or craziness or learning opportunity. I, I'm, I'm friends with the owner of Fab Cafe, really cool guy, a Japanese guy. Really does a lot of work to promote the, the maker community. But both of those entities, Fab Lab and Fab Cafe, they have to think about their image as much as they think about the project. Hackerspaces don't care about image. Substance comes before form. Very backwards. And it's, that's the thing we're always kind of fighting a little bit. It's fun. The hard part is sometimes is just keeping it clean, getting the trash out before it starts to get smelly. You know? These are the challenges of a hackerspace. We moved in, what, maybe three months ago? And we finally, last weekend, got a sitting toilet. Unlike a lot of the other places that we've had before, this one is like, you can hack the space. 